Today's video is about taking a foraged yellow ochre soil and mixing it with some natural indigo pigment and a foraged yellow ochre rock, which I grind up, that is a little darker than the soil, to make a green pigment stick, which is basically a pastel. Only I make these out of foraged soil pigments. Uh, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, you can find a lot more of this kind of content on Instagram. I post quite a bit there, videos, and I take uh, the foraged local soils and rock pigments from near my home in Montana, and I use them to make handmade watercolors and what I call pigment sticks, which are basically pastel drawing sticks. The soils that I forage here in Montana come in a variety of different colors, and they also come with different concentrations and different types of clay in them. And what that does when I make a pigment stick out of them is it, depending on the amount and type of clay that is in each soil, it changes the consistency of each pigment stick. And what I mean by this is that some of these processed soils, I end up with a pigment stick that is quite soft and you can almost completely rub off. Some of them with a little bit more clay, you get a pigment stick that is still soft, but stays, you can still see the lines. And then some of them have so much clay in them that I end up with almost a waxy uh, feel to the pigment stick and it draws like a crayon, which is pretty cool. It makes a nice line and it also doesn't really rub off. So when I'm making my pigment sticks, depending on what I'm looking for, I sometimes mix different soil samples together so I can get the consistency that I want. And the yellow that I'm using today is a fairly soft, but not too soft. It's this one on the top here, color. And so I am gonna try to find a clean finger first. And I'm gonna mix it with the blue and this yellow to make the green. Because these two pigments are uh, kind of grainy, I have to uh, make them into smaller particles for them to make a good pastel pigment stick. So the first thing I'm gonna do with them is mull them up using my glass muller here into a fine powder. Basically, I'm just grinding them together with some water until they are smooth enough and small enough pieces that they will mix really nicely with my yellow soil. And I will also, not sure what, how green this is gonna be. I may have to add back either some of that yellow or some of the blue. I've got this yellow ochre and indigo pretty well mulled up into fine enough particles that it will uh, make a good pigment stick. So I'm going to start adding in my yellow, my foraged yellow soil. And we will just add water. Again, this is, I haven't done anything to this. This is just the soil that I foraged and processed. Nothing else added. Now I can sort of start to see what the color is gonna be on this. Which looks pretty nice. So I will continue to mix this up until it is a nice consistent paste. And then I will scoop it up and stick it on a coffee filter to draw any of the extra water out. It looks a little bit like a green icing, but I will 
pile this all up on a coffee filter, which will um, help draw a little bit more of the water out. until it is, it might be, actually might be good enough to work. Sometimes um, when I do this, it's very um, sticky. And so I just have to let the coffee filter draw the water out, but this actually is dry enough to form into a stick. So I have my little wet pigment stick that is dry enough to handle. You can just roll them up, let them dry slowly like this, but I like to make them square because then they don't roll off your table. So I've just made this little set of molds for different um, sizes. And I just use little bits of wax paper and I start shaping it in here. So. Just kind of press it in to the biggest one here first. And then this is the size I want right here. So I just sort of start gently forming it. I usually flip it over once, so both sides are pretty square. And grab a just something flat. Okay, that about the right size for my pigment box. And then I always mark these with a series of letters that so that I can catalog exactly what went into them. And I know that this is my yellow pigment plus indigo. So this is just one of those handy things you can, uh, it's like a band stamp, I think that's what it's called. You can change, change the lettering on it. So I will mark this. Then I just have a couple of pieces of drywall because they are very good at soaking things, soaking the moisture out of things. I use them oops, when I do pottery. The other thing it does is it keeps it flat so they don't, uh, so this doesn't warp. And what I need to do is grab of my already made pigment sticks just so I've got something else to balance this on. So I will let that sit overnight and in the morning I'll be able to take it out and let it dry the rest of the way. It's been about 12 hours since I made the pigment stick and it is almost dry, not quite, but I can leave it out now. It's dry enough that I can leave it out and it won't warp or crack. I did yesterday make a slightly smaller one that I was able to just leave out so I can check the color this morning. So it's soft, but stays on the paper, which is good. And then for comparison, here are a couple of the other pigment sticks that I have made. going to be a good addition to this set of colors.